नमस्कार स्वागत है आप सभी का सीआईटी एनसीईआरटी के लाइव फोन इन कार्यक्रम में मैं हूं तानवी खुराना एंड दिस इज अ मैथ्स क्लास फॉर ऑल द नाइन्थ क्लास चिल्ड्रन एंड दिस इज द सब्जेक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट व्हिच इज हिरोन्स फॉर्मूला एंड दिस इज द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ दिस होल चैप्टर ऑफ दिस होल कॉन्सेप्ट इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन पार्ट वन आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज वॉच इंड ऑन आर एन ऑफिशियल दैट इज आर यूट्यूब चैनल द पार्ट वन हैज ऑलरेडी बिन अपलोडेड ओवर देर सो यू आर वॉचिंग हियर विद आस पार्ट टू If you have any questions, any queries, anything that you haven't understood regarding Heron's formula, then please reach out to us. Give us a call on our number, which is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. If you have our email ID, you can even email us. That is dth dot class nine at the rate ciet dot nic dot in. So. Um we have a guest with us let me please introduce her to all of you she is mrs beena prakash a very warm welcome to you ma'am good afternoon tanvi ji and good afternoon to all my ninth class students good afternoon to you too ma'am ma'am is a senior pgt in mathematics from campion school bhopal so ma'am will be talking about uh, this concept and they will be taking up uh, from where we left on part 1 but before we begin this program this discussion i would uh, like to announce make this announcement a very important announcement regarding india's g20 presidency well we are extremely proud that india assumed g20 presidency and would convene the g20 leader summit for the first time in the country this year a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india's g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of vasudev kutumbakam or the world is one family with that let's begin uh, this program and uh, before we begin part 2 let me please ask ma'am ma'am what exactly did we understand in part 1 of heron's formula ma'am uh, sure in the last class we discussed about the formula that is heron's formula for finding the area of a triangle okay. i'll be taking that de definition once again today so that you all can recollect the formula and then today we'll be actually dealing with application of heron's formula that is wherever we require heron's formula we'll be applying it otherwise we are actually finding the area of any polygon right so the first question that we have is just a part of it is the solution part of it is the revision of what we discussed in the last class like the sides of the triangles are mentioned so heron's formula actually deals with area of a triangle when we have the measures of the three sides as in the lower classes in the dear children you must have learned that area of any triangle is half multiplied by its altitude altitude means the distance of the opposite vertex from the base now here we do not have the length of the altitude instead what is given is the sides of the triangle in that case we make use of heron's formula and to find hero take up the area by heron's formula we have this formula that is s multiplied by s it's under root of s multiplied by s minus a the the area of the triangle is s under the root of s multiplied by s minus a multiplied to s minus b multiplied to s minus c uh, what is this s minus a S, uh, s what is this s s is nothing but half the perimeter so we find the perimeter that is all the sides are added so when all the sides are added we find that value is 150 so it's uh, semi perimeter is 75 so this is semi perimeter so we find the area of the triangle using that formula this was the formula that we discussed in the last class that is known as heron's formula so let us evaluate the area of the triangle abc what is it it is 75 multiplied by 75 minus 35 Is it clear? The cursor is clear, no? Yes, so ma'am. Seventy-five minus fifty-four, seventy-five minus sixty-one. So we just evaluate that. We find that it is seventy-five multiplied by forty, multiplied by twenty-one, multiplied by fourteen. Now we will have to take out the perfect square. We will have to make a perfect square in it. Look for the perfect square numbers here. So you find that fourteen and twenty-one, they have seven in it. So that seven has been taken out. That this is for the evaluation purpose. I am discussing. So we are left with three and two. Leave it here. Now another number, any other number where you can look for a perfect square, seventy-five. Seventy-five has twenty, twenty-five and three, so that comes out as five. Now what is left? Yes, four is there. Four's perfect square is two. That is okay. Now the number that is left is one three from here. That will also come out. So finally, what is left is nothing but this ten 
and this 2. So the 10 and 2 gives us 2 root 5. So the total area of this triangle comes out to be 210 root 5 square. Now we will come across this type of numbers, irrational numbers, because the sides are any integers. So in that case, we may come across the irrational number. So the area of this triangle is 210 root 5 square centimeter. Now it's not necessary that you have to evaluate this root 5. You don't have to write the value. You can leave the answer in this form. Fine. Now you are actually finding the length of the longest altitude. Now the longest altitude, the length of the longest altitude, the question is, how will you find which one will be the length longest side or longest altitude? When you drop perpendicular on to different sides, this is a perpendicular from B. This is a perpendicular from C. It will be somewhere here. It will be on the extended line of AB. It's like here. So what do you find? It is not this, not this. It is the AD which is the longest. So which one is the longest? So the longest is on that is on the shortest side this is the information we have it is on the shortest side so that was from the opposite shortest side opposite vertex is a so when you drop a perpendicular from a it falls on bc extended it is not in the triangle but it is extended so you are finding the area of this uh, sorry length of this altitude how will you find the length of the altitude we just compare this so now we come across the application part it has just been applied to evaluate the area to find edge because we require the area of the triangle. So what is the area of the triangle? Half base multiplied by height. This is the formula that we have been studying. So using this formula, we will get the height. So height is nothing but 210 divided by half that is multiplied by 2. All those calculations have taken up and you find that the 7 cancels this and then you have 5 also cancels and finally you get 6 root 5 centimeter. So you go for the calculation, you will find that's the answer you have. Fine. Now next question is again, find a point in the interior of an equilateral triangle. Perpendiculars are drawn on the three sides. The length of the perpendiculars are 614 this. Find the area of the triangle. You are finding the area of this triangle ABC. What without information? The triangle is equilateral. That means all its sides are equal. So let the sides of the triangle be A. Fine. So now the question is, you have to find the area of the triangle whose sides is not given to us. So then how do we look for the area? We have studied that area of the triangle can be divided as in terms of the smaller triangles. See, you can make it into smaller triangles because altitude is mentioned. So we can use the altitudes from O as the required length. So that you can have it as area of triangle AOB, AOC and BOC. Now I will be divided into three triangles AOC, BOC and all the three triangles area is nothing but ABC. Now which formula we are using here? We are using the formula for equilateral triangle that is root 3 on 4 A square. Now what is that you get from this expression? It is half AB multiplied by OP its perpendicular distance. Half AC multiplied by OQ its perpendicular distance. Half CB multiplied by OR its perpendicular distance. Now, in all the three cases, you find that the sides of the triangle, they are same, so it is half of it. So, we just have to add the perpendicular's length that is given, that is 14, 10 and 6, and that comes out to be 30. 30 and the final answer from here will be A is equal to 20 root 3. So, what is required to find the area? We require the side and we got it. So, this is the area of the <coughs> triangle. Fine. Right? The next question is, you have to find DF if area of triangle ABC, area of triangle ABC and the area of BCED, BCED, BCED is a parallelogram. They are equal. You have to find the altitude of this parallelogram DF. Again, question, how do we take up the area? What is the A that is given is area of triangle ABC. Area of triangle ABC, how will you find it? It's a min, it is in terms of the three sides of the triangle. So we will go for, again, Heron's formula. That is, we will get S and then through that S, we will substitute the values for the formula S, S minus A, S minus B and S minus B. Now we are taking it is equal to, because it's equal to the area of the parallelogram. So what is the area of the parallelogram? 
base multiplied by height. So base is 7 and height is dm. So this expression's evaluation will give us the height, distance d or distance of d and f that is df. So again look at the calculation. It is 21 upon 4 and this is 21 minus this will come out to be 15. 15 21 minus 15 is 6, 6 upon 2 and this will come out to be 13 that is 8 upon 2. 21 minus 14 is 7 upon 2. So you have this expression. Now look for the perfect squares in it. Like this uh, 21 upon 2 has 7 upon 2 so that 1 7 upon 2 is out. Then you are left with 3, 1, 3 and this 3. From here you have a 3, 3 upon 2 that comes out. Then that 2 and 8 combines you get 4 upon 2. So that way we can take up the calculation. So you have to be very careful because this is a question based on computation. Computation means a lot of calculation. So you have to be very careful in calculating and you will have to be very smart in taking up what formula is to be applied. You try to apply the formulas that you have learned, algebraic expressions that you have learned in the lower class to avoid the computational mistakes. Fine. Now the next question that you have is a field is in the form of a trapezium having two sides that is parallel sides are mentioned as 30 and 90. It meets the third side, the third side, one of the side at 90 degree. The length of the fourth side is 100. The length of the four. Fine. If the cost of the, now see the application here, the cost of plowing the field is rupees 4 per square meter. You have to find the cost to plow the field. That's what you have. So when can you find the cost of the plow? Um, then only when you have the area. Now how do we find the area of this field? To find the area of the field, what is required? You require the perpendicular distance between because it's a form a trapezium and the area of trapezium is area of A, B, B, C, D is nothing but half the parallel sides. It is 90 plus 30 and multiplied by H. That is you require this H. Now how will you get this H? Look at this expression. What I did is I drew parallel. This is I drop perpendicular. We drop CP perpendicular to AB. Fine. So therefore these two sides are H. Now look at this triangle. In triangle just look at this triangle. In triangle PCB. Don't you have a Pythagorean triplet here? 100 square minus 60 square is 80. So this is what I am saying. Be very particular and smart in taking up the calculation. You should be aware of certain numbers information like 80, 60, 100 they are Pythagorean triplets. So you have this as simple 80 back. So you don't require much time to evaluate You get the answer. Now the area of <coughs> this you can take it as area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle whichever way I got the area and then the cost. Cost is just multiplied by 4. So you have the cost. Now next question is the perimeter of a triangle is 50 centimeters. One of its sides is 44 cm longer than the smaller and the other one is 6 cm less than twice the smaller side. So one side is x, let the smallest side be x and the one side that is is x plus 4. It's greater than 4. It's more than 4, 4 more than the smaller side. And the third side is 6 less than the twice the smaller side that is 2x minus 6. Right? Now from this what we are getting? The three sides added together will give us the perimeter and that is 50. It is already mentioned. The three sides is together 50. So when you add these three expressions, we get x value as 30. So if x is 13, what will semi-perimeter be? S will be half the perimeter that is 25. So how will you find the area? Again, that is on the basis of Heron's formula. It is 25 times 25 minus 13, 25 minus 17. 4 more than 30 is 17. Then you have twice. Twice of 13 is 26 minus 6 is 20. So the third side is 20. So look at the numbers that you will get under the root. Under the root you will get a 25. Then you find that 25 minus 13 is 12. 25 minus 17 is 8. And 25 minus 5, 20 is 5. Now what all numbers perfect square you can have 25 is nothing but 5 and that is 5 5 and then from 12 you can take out a 4 leaving 3 here so we have 3 I'm just factorizing it so that you will be able to get the answers now 8 also contains 4 and that's 2 so what we find are these two can be taken out for the perfect square and then left are the numbers that is there with under root. So that will come out to be root 30. So the area of the triangle is 
the area of the triangle is 20 root 3, 30 square centimeters. Fine. Now the next question. Two parallel sides of a trapezium are 22 centimeters and 10 centimeters respectively. Find the area of the trapezium if the two non-parallel sides are 13 cm and 14 cm. Now again look at this expression. What do we have? We have the <coughs> sides of the trapezium. Fine. All sides of the trapezium are given. But how will you go for the area of the trapezium? How will you go for the area of the trapezium? If all sides are given, we do not have a formula. So the only option that we will have to take up is consider or divide this into two triangles. So if I use this triangle ADCB and ACB, if I use this triangle DCB and ACB, I need to get the length of DC, uh, DB. The length of DB is not given. Then in that case, we will look for the second option. What is the second option? The second option. Second option is to join A and C. There also you will find that you are not going to get you are not going to get the third side. Ma'am, uh, here did you join A and C or C and B? Just a minute, just a minute. Yeah. I am saying if we join if if you join A and C hmm. if you join A and C you get two triangles they are triangle DCA and triangle ACB. Yeah. Now for the areas of these two triangles, you require the third side that is AC. You will require the third side AC for both the cases because the perpendicular altitudes are not mentioned. We do not have the altitude. So you cannot use Heron's form because the third side of the triangle is not there. So what is the other option? We are looking for options to evaluate. I am just trying to tell you that this is not the way how to get up there. So what we do is, we will first, I'll, what I do is, see, I'll join, I'll make a line which is parallel to AB, fine, parallel to AB. So this line, CE, is parallel to AB. Now what is the purpose of joining this and making a parallelogram? See, you, don't, you have this side as 13, then this will, the side, Side EB will be AEB minus A. So, what did be 12? Don't you have the three sides of the triangle ECB? We do. That will help you to just get the area of the triangle through the Hiron's formula. Yeah. Now see, this particular question again, you, I have taken up this particular question because the numbers are not that good. S is coming out to be in fraction. So, whatever it is, children, please don't bother. You take up the number as such. You will come across such type of number. These are questions on computations. So just handle it the way it should be taken up. Like this is use a fraction. Keep it in the fraction form. We do not always get a area or height and all in a perfect number form. That is integer form. So you can always look for the decimals and all or irrational number in the form of radical. That is root of some number. So leave it as such. So you find that the S that we evaluated is 39 upon 2 and then using that S when you evaluate the area, this is see such big numbers and all those numbers there, it is hardly only one number that is coming out as a perfect square. The rest are all in the radical sign. So 13 times under root of 33 multiplied by 90. So now just see how I have taken it. I did not multiply because I wanted the square, uh, the question says the find the area. So I don't require this actually exactly the same thing. So we will not evaluate and waste our time. We will go ahead. What was the purpose of evaluating this area? To get the height. This length we require. We require this length CP. To get the height, we have used this formula. So how do we get that height? It is half. We are taking up the area of triangle CEB in terms of half base multiplied by height. And then comparing it with the area that we got just now. So that way we get the height as this number, which is again a very bad number. Now bad number in this is, its evaluation will come out to be very, uh, it's in the decimal form. So let us not evaluate and waste our time, we can do it. Now the area of the triangle that we have is, area of the <coughs> rectangle 
a parallelogram sorry area of the parallelogram half base multiplied by height or you can straight away go in for the area of the trapezoid whichever way you will have the answer this way now you i have left it this way now question is what is the further answer now look at this number and look for the smart work see smart work is you can write this approximately perpendicular that is if you want to avoid the radical sign then we can take it as approximate now what is it approximately see this number is very closer to 36 whose perfect square we know that is 6 and this number is very closer to 16 so what is it it's 4 so it is 4 times it is approximately equal 52 multiplied to 6 times 4 this is only for approximate value not for exact value if you want some exact value to if the question says get it up to the two decimal places or something then you have to work out for the uh, the square root of this number otherwise you can always leave the answer this way usually when the quest question is based on finding the cost suppose this question is extended and it is said you find the cost then in that case leaving the answer in this form will not help you out you will have to evaluate so this will not be a, a small question that is it will not be a two mark or three mark it is its weightage will be little more because every teacher knows that evaluation of this will take time so based on that the marks will also be increased so look at the marking scheme and then decide what is required further fine now we move on to the next question that is find the area find the percentage area in the area, increase in the area of a triangle if each sides are doubled okay. now question is you have the original area what is the original area of the triangle ma'am uh, ma'am we have a couple of minutes left for this program ha i'll just wind up with this first sure. question right yeah now we have another triangle mm -hmm. we used another triangle okay whose area we are finding the sides the sides of that triangle mm -hmm. has been increased right the sides of the triangle has been increased so what will that give us it's semi perimeter what will it be 2a plus 2b plus 2c upon So this comes out to be twice of s. So let us rewrite this in terms of twice of s. So what we have twice of s, twice of s minus 2a, twice of s minus 2b. The sides are increased, doubled. It's 2c. So we find that each term we have two common. See how many twos are there? Four twos are there. So that way we get this as four times under the root. What is left is nothing but the area of the triangle so we get it as four times area of the triangle that we got right s minus so that is four times a so the question is how much percentage will have the increase so what is the increase so what is the increase in area increase in area will be it is a plus minus the area so what is that value it is 4a minus a which comes out to be 3a so therefore increase in percentage will be in percentage will be the increase in area upon the actual percentage multiplied by 100 so what is the increase in percentage it is 300 percent so a sides of the triangles are doubled we find the area increases by 300 percent Right? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Or yeah. we still have time? Ma'am, we don't have any more time. I think this is enough, and I'm sure our students are going to practice a lot more questions on Heron's formula to understand this better. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you to all the students for understanding this concept of Heron's formula. I'm sure you've got the idea what exactly is it, and you can practice all those questions in your book, and uh, you can get this concept a little better. So thank you so much once again, and uh, we are wrapping up this particular program here. But coming up next is our special program, which is webinar, and the topic of discussion would be media literacy and non-violence communication. So stay here, keep on watching Evidya channels, and uh, for now we. really want to announce uh, the announcement we have once again on india's g20 presidency we are extremely proud that india assumed g20 presidency and would convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country this year 
A nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding the pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of Vasudev Kutumkam, or should I say the world is one family. With that announcement, thank you so much once again. I am Tanvi Kurana. I'll take a leave of you. Namaskar.